this is the College of Southern Nevada's Air Conditioning Center of Excellence. We're in Las Vegas, Nevada. We have many campuses, but this particular one is dedicated to air conditioning technologies. The whole yeah. campus, just air conditioning. Absolutely. So how cool is that? So this particular room that we're in, what room is this? This is the food service refrigeration room. So this room has everything medium, low temperature refrigeration. That's very cool. Now, I see these really nice walk-in boxes or reach-in boxes or combination. Uh, so it looks like I had a professional company come in and install these. No, not at all. We actually erected this with our students. This was students built. So the students built everything you're seeing now. Absolutely. That is students absolutely built. awesome. So that's what they're going to be doing in the field is the refrigeration side. You're going to be putting this stuff together and they're learning that right here. Uh, yep, absolutely. They, we had plans. We purchased it. The students watched, looked at those plans and erected it themselves um, along with supervision from the faculty members and subject matter experts. That's awesome. I've worked at schools across the country and I've yet to have a school that had these reach-in and walk-in boxes built like this. So this to me is really exciting and really impressive. But wait, there's a whole lot more going on in here. Let's walk around the corner. Oh, this is the ice machine aisle. We've got a variety of ice machines that students all do the maintenance on. They clean them out. They um, put troubleshooting bugs in it. And they're real machines. I don't have a switch in the back that puts a, puts a diagnostic in. They are real. They're full of ice right now. So they're actually operating machines. That's it. Oh, looky there. It's real stuff. This is operating equipment. Now what's also neat about this is that there's a variety of equipment here. Like I don't just see one ice machine or one brand of ice machine. There's multiple different ice machines. And I think that is really cool. Absolutely. Crystal, Crystal did you know back in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, we actually had flavored ice? Yeah, we had vanilla. It was <laughs> vanilla ice. Uh... This is pretty cool. Like all the schools I've worked in, I've never seen this for school. What is this? It's an equivalent of a walk-in cooler. Basically, you have the compressor, all the all the components, electricals on the other side. Basically, students are able to run their conduits, run their wiring, and they're able to control the com semi-hermetic compressor, and they're able to connect all the water and all the stuff incorporated with the walk-in cooler. So this is where they can actually plumb them themselves and get more hands-on for an individual-style learner. So they get to do brazing and wiring and all that stuff on these trainers right here? Yes, sir. Basically, hands-on. Hands -on. That's what we're looking for, right? The students will be able to do this on their own on more individualized learning plan. That's pretty awesome. We have classes about how many students per unit do you have? Typically, it's two students per unit. Typically, we have uh, 12 students per class, so that's two people per unit. Wait, 12 students in a class? Yep. Now, I'm used to seeing students that have 25, 30, even 40 people in a classroom with only maybe one type of one or two trainers. So you're saying you have 12 people in a class. Yep. That's one on one connection, and you get two people for one of these. So it's not just a whole bunch of people crowded around, they actually get their hands on it. Yes, that's exactly so, it. I'm shocked. Like, I love this. I've been in training school all across the country and I haven't seen this kind of training before. So to me, this is really, really awesome. Like, I am really impressed with this. I got goosebumps. You guys know I love HVAC. This is awesome. Like, I'm loving this. We have some cool electrical stuff over here. And what's cool is it's actually been taken apart and being used. You can tell people work on this, but what are they working on right here? Yeah, this is actually more for the electrical side of a walk-in uh, walk freezer and a walk-in cooler. Because this goes into the defrost box, normal defrost box and digital defrost box. So the students can prepare and wire up the individual components on a smaller scale. We actually have 12 of these trainers also. We built these trainers and we're very happy with them. I love the fact that they can come in and wire and hook the pieces up. I love seeing that it's not just for looks. You can see the components right here. I know I've been at schools before that had stuff set up, but you couldn't actually work with it because it was just for looks. But here you can see students actually work with it. There's a whole bunch of stuff all over the place here. And I uh, I love that. I love the variety. I love that you can try stuff out and uh, without having to worry about messing up, you know, the, the equipment. So you can practice and, and burn parts up here in a safe environment before you get to the big one. And we, we know that we don't want to actively burn up parts. But the fact is, if a mistake happens, it's much better to happen right here. We can control it and learn from it before we get out to the field. So uh, this is really cool. Yeah, absolutely. A few potentiometers and a few little motors and a couple of light bulbs and you're set to go. Okay? See? Get a couple of defrost clocks that you can work with and a couple of temperature displays and you're good to go. I know that uh, you're very popular with HVAC and it looks like you have a lot of fans. I love it. So this is really, really awesome. Oh, this is a heat pump package unit out on a rooftop. We're going to be working on rooftop systems. And this is the first time I've actually seen a setup where students can actually learn what it's like working on shingles, working at the angles. And when you drop a tool, it's going to roll off. 
What's even better is they have the real curbs, the adjustable curb setup that you're going to have in real life. Your disconnect, your roof fit. I mean, this is this is as real life as you can get. Yep, the actual rooftop trainers, those were built and contracted out. But everything else, the roof jacks, the curb, the, the unit, was all put on by the students with a faculty supervision. This is all part of our installation class. So the students get full real life experience of how to put on a unit. So in Las Vegas and also Phoenix, Arizona, there is a lot of package units on top of residential. So if you're in another part of the country, this may seem really odd to you. But here in Las Vegas and also in Phoenix, this is a very common thing. And so they've adapted their training program to make sure they're fitting the needs of uh, their local environment. And this is, this is great. I love this. It's been a wonderful training tool, students from a school environment to going into real life. This is one of the ways that we're bridging that gap and putting them into real world scenarios. You drop a tool, it goes down. You put the panel and then you end up slipping, then it becomes a problem. So this is where they learn how to adapt to real life scenarios of being on a roof. As much as a student better learn here to if they slip, there's a floor right there versus the two story drop down. This is incredible, love this. Yep, all the experience, minimize the liability. <laughs> so this is really cool. We know that we're gonna be working in attics in really tight situations. And a lot of times students will leave school and they realize they're claustrophobic, they don't know how to do this, or they're surprised if they're working in an attic. And right here is a whole attic simulation with ductwork, with the plenums, with everything you're gonna do, and even the thermostat wiring, the high voltage wiring. This is awesome, plus it does it in a safe environment where if something happens, you have instructors here, the floor is right there, you don't have to worry about falling through a ceiling. It's a perfect combination between safety and real life training. Supreme setup. We are trying to get the students, get the experience, and the students will mount the unit, have the roof curbs, install the plenums in, they'll attach the ductwork. They do all this, all the real life experience, doing it in a safe environment. All the students, they basically, they put it all together, and then at the end, they tear it apart, and then the next class gets to do it too. <laughs> this is awesome. For me, this is like a, this is a playground. But for the students, this is, this is real world training. This is awesome. Here we have even more equipment, tons of different package units, a variety of systems, and all behind us we see tons of different units where students can get their real hands-on learning. But one thing that's overlooked so many times is duct systems. And above us, this room is filled with all different types of duct systems, duct fittings, they can do airflow checks, and the airflow for everything that is essential. So here we say all the time, airflow, airflow, airflow. Well, here they're not just talking about airflow, they're able to actually test it, they're able to do it. And this lab is absolutely amazing, Crystal. Thank you. So the systems that you see up in the air are actually installed by us. Well, the students actually put up the unistrut, they put up the all thread, they put up the units themselves, they connect the ductwork to it, and the ductwork is made by our students in the sheet metal lab. So it is actually all in our program. Students are able to get real hands-on learning experience of hanging units. Do you say you have a sheet metal shop also? Yes, I do. Oh. I can't wait. These high velocity, high pressure duct systems, that's really impressive to see. This is actually a brand new system that we just got at the AHR Expo. So you're still updating and upgrading, even though you have all this beautiful equipment, you're staying up with the time. Yes, sir. <laughs> you can't get better than that. Speaking of technology and changes and differences, we're seeing a lot of these ductless, what we call mini split systems now. So we decided to go ahead and make some mini split trainers, and the students pipe in new line sets on every class. They get to install the conduits for the electrical, they get to hang the units. They get to do the maintenances on it. Right here, you'll see it even says bad board on it because it is a live action unit. Real life, we're gonna have to learn how to flare these properly, how to make the flares, test for leaks, and use torque spec to make sure you don't over tighten. That's, this is beautiful. That's it. I'm loving this. Now this is something to me that is very important. And for, for me as an instructor, I love seeing this because this tells me that students are getting their hands on. Every school should have some kind of a junk pile, so to speak, or a hands-on pile. I call it a treasure pile. But this is important in education, being able to take stuff apart, having a scrap pile, being able to look at stuff and see how it works. This right here means just as much to me as all the really cool, fancy, clean stuff. I, I love it. Yeah, you want to see how a motor works? Instead of looking at a picture in a book, look at me, take it apart, look at it. Exactly. We are big, big supporters of learning through exposure. We want the students to be exposed to all the different things that can be around them. You know, we're an educational facility. We're trying to train them for what's out there in the world. So we want them to be trained for what they can encounter, what to think about, what, how to fix it, and how does something work. So something as simple as motors, we were able to take them apart and find out, okay, what are the inner workings of this? What are the inner workings of open motors, closed motors, pulleys, learn through exposure, and our students are able to be a little bit more successful out in the world. I would have to call this the, uh, the stalls because you have so much horsepower sitting right here.
So I've seen two issues with window units. Either schools don't have any at all, or sometimes it's like the main only thing that they teach with. So these window units are made for electrical purposes. These are the units that we're using to, for the students to practice their brand new introduction basic electrical classes, where they are learning basic electrical schematics. They're just learning about electricity. They're just learning about what a compressor does. So this is their introductory level of equipment. This is really nice. This is a one-to-one -one situation for us. A student gets one unit per person. So that's why we have so many. So here we are in the same room. This room is massive. We just can't even get to everything that's in this room. But this is a cool section here. We have got gas furnaces, and this actually has standing pilot systems. We have hot service igniter systems. We have all different types of furnaces right here, as well as we have module ductless systems that are all connected. And what's even really cool is they have these vent hoods. So when they're practicing brazing in here, they're actually able to pull those fumes up and out of the room. I don't know how many times I've been at schools and there's no ventilation. So they're doing brazing or working with carbon monoxide and all that just builds up in the room. I personally always travel with my carbon monoxide monitor, my low level monitor for my safety. And here we can see it's at zero. And what's cool is they actually have the ventilation system so that as a bunch of students are brazing and working, they're keeping the air clean. And my air quality monitor, the whole time I've been here, has it sounded off at once. Units right here, we got the VRV, VRF, those are the air handlers for that. The actual condensing unit is over here. And over here, we got a whole wall full of furnaces, all between 60% unit, natural, natural draft unit, all the way to 99% efficiency units. I also want to point out here, the student has a bad board. That tells you that students are working on it. Sometimes you go to a school and everything's pristine. A lot of times it means the students don't get to actually work on stuff. But here, it's saying there's a bad board. They label it so they know the next person knows, hey, there's a problem with it, and they can get these things fixed. But more importantly, that students are actively working with this equipment. So when you see stuff like this, the labeling system, the communication system, that's really awesome. Every unit's got a name and an address so they can do their invoicing and they can diagnose, troubleshoot, write down their invoice and document their findings. So if they do replace something, and let's say they replace the bad board, they're able to go into the unit, write an invoice that they re re corrected the issue and have commissioned the unit and is properly operating and working. So all these units, they all do the same thing, which is which is a wonderful gig. That is really awesome. I didn't realize you were doing that, but that's so important. Sometimes students come out of school, they don't know how to invoice or communicate with the customer. So actually having to be able to put the customer's name and address on there along with the serial number. Guys, I can't tell you how important that is. That's huge. I didn't know you guys were doing that. This is this is great. Absolutely. A customer service is one of those one of those things that we the the industry, the students, the employees, we all need soft skills. We need to be able to communicate with customers. We need to be able to help list, actively listen and help our customers to fix the equipment properly. And with soft skills, all that can be bridged. And you said the students need to actively what? Actively listen. Actively what? Yep, exactly. <laughs> We've got a Bosch unit. This is the condensing unit for the Bosch system. And this is all student made. This trainer was student made. This equipment was installed by students and it's still in the works. We still got wires hanging out of it because it hasn't been all the way connected yet. But it's all a work in progress with these classes so that the students get full immersion of how to mount systems, how to install them properly, and how to work inside of closed spaces out in the world. So you said a Bosch unit. So this unit is a, has an inverter drive on it. The compressor is able to match the load in the house. So they're able to ramp up, ramp down based on need. So we do not need to turn off and on, off and on. We are able to drive it up and back down as needed. You know, that's so important because I think in my car, I don't just simply have on and off. Although some people around here do drive like that, it's all gas or brake. Mm -hmm. What's cool about the Bosch is it's kind of like how we drive. If we need to go faster, it speeds up and starts working faster, and then it will also slow down. So it's able to match the load a whole lot better. And this is new technology that's out here. This Bosch, well, it's new. It's been around for a, the technology's been around for a while, but it's now been implemented for the last year or so. Uh, and it's great to see this system uh, right here so they can learn about it before they find it in the field. Because it's really embarrassing sometimes when you're working in a system and you have no clue and never seen it before, right here in the campus. Learning through exposure.
So if you watch any of my videos, you get to see on gas heating. I love taking things apart. We talk about the heat exchangers. One thing you can't do with my videos, you can't see it. This heat exchanger here has a crack in it. And I think that's so important to have busted bad equipment because it's not always going to be new. So here a student can come in and be able to inspect the heat exchanger on the other side where you can't see it, and then come on this side and see what's actually happening. I can't stress enough how important it is. Then they have a variety of heat exchangers, just like I do, so you can see how they actually work, how the flame moves through there. Now the video is great, I try to show and share with you guys, but here you can see, you can actually touch it, you can follow through how the flame's gonna go through the, through the first part, you can see how the gases are flowing through, how they collect. I think it's so important having this hands-on here and having bad equipment. I know I've been at schools before that did not want to have bad equipment because it looks bad. And here you have bad equipment as a tool, as a learning resource. That's it. Basically, these, these pieces of equipment right here, these heat exchangers, they came out of real units. They were donated to us by our industry partners, by our contractors out in the industry that are local to us. And so anytime they see something that's worth an educational value, they bring it over and we display it. We put it on for the students to see so they can see um, all the different styles of heat exchangers, all the different burners. And exactly, what a treasure. This is hard know, to find. I know you guys have seen this in my video, but it's not just me doing it. Here's great instructors that have this set up right here live for you, for you to see and you can practice with you. See how it's working. All those questions you have, there'll be somebody here with you to answer these questions. Exactly. So all this stuff is made for the students to see what is going on in a unit and all the different types of units that are out there. Look. Oh, uh, here's one of the things I really love. So if you see something like this, your first thought is going to be airflow. What's even better is you have it right here so you can see this and you can really imagine airflow is so important and you're looking at it thinking, wow, i got to solve the airflow so this doesn't happen to my customer's unit. I love this damaged equipment, this old equipment, because this is true learning right here. So here, this is really cool. We have a full entire sheet metal shop. So there's brakes, there's Pittsburgh machines, there's all kinds of sheet metal equipment all around us. There's shears, and there is a ton of experience right here in just learning how the sheet metal side so works. And this, this is a whole career in its own with just so sheet metal. Gotta... But not only that, they're also using this, this also as a brazing and piping class. So we're all around us, the students are working on doing piping, taking measurements, learning how the equipment works. And a big thing is the instructors are right here to help them through. In the field, you're gonna have jobs to do, you're gonna have tasks to do, and you're not gonna have somebody there showing you every step to do it. So here in this nice, safe learning environment, you have instructors ready to help, ready to answer questions, and also to push you. Because sometimes people need to be pushed, and I'm one of those people. But this is, this is it, this is real hands-on. It's not just us showing labs. You can see right here, there's another instructor here in this room, and there's just tons of equipment all over this. We're gonna do a sheet metal segment later on, but this is a full sheet metal shop. All of the plenums that you see, they can make all that right here. And it's not just talking about it, it's really doing it. I'm really impressed with this. Thank you, but basically this is a sheet metal shop, but as you can see, we have students working in here right now doing a flare lab. And the, the space is multi-use. We are able to use other sheet metal shop. We've got the layout benches that are able to do other things versus just sheet metal. This is also an installation lab. The students are able to spread out, they're able to work sheet metal, they're able to do their layouts, they're able to do their copper, they're able to creativity to use. The lab itself, I want to put a little bit of attention towards all the ductwork is different. They have snap lock, round duct, rectangular duct, do different airflow scenarios, they able to do traverse readings, different things in this lab. This is actually one of my favorite labs. And another thing I want to point out is some of the tools I see being used here are the modern tools, the modern type of flaring tools. Uh, sometimes I've been at so many schools and have the old style that you're trying to force through and they're stripped out. So these are modern tools doing that 45 degree flare. And so many of the ductless systems now, that flaring is gonna be essential. So everything they're learning right here is full on practical, uh, modern tools, modern equipment. Um, again, I can't say it enough. I am truly, I'm just impressed. I'm blown away actually by all that's going on here. Oh my gosh. We have a full York chiller system. So you talk about EPA tests, you talk about chiller systems. Uh, you people always are hearing chiller systems. First time I've ever seen a full size chiller system in a school, and it's right here. I mean, everything. Amazon, so you can see how it works. You have the control systems, you have the motors, uh, and, and other sorts of things. You're in a party, you're in a real world stuff, you're actually doing this. So they're going to work with this equipment. I'm sure it's not operating, but you get to take this apart, you can see how it works, you get to touch it, the students get to connect with it. 
So you said that immersion training right here. How did you get it? You're chilling. Oh, this is actually a donation directly from our college. When we talk about type three and the EPA and low pressure systems, we're able to tell them exactly what we're talking about. We're able to discuss where the water goes in, where the water comes out, and where's the evaporator, where's the condenser. We're able to talk about where's that charging point in a system on a low pressure chiller. So we're actually able to do all that. It does not operate, so we are able to show them all the different components of mechanically and electrically. This lab is just phenomenal in help facilitating the students' learning. This program, they do chillers, boilers, and controls, because all those are intermingled for the commercial aspect of the industry. All across the country, chillers are a big part of what they do, especially right here in Las Vegas. A lot of casinos and chillers are essential to what we're working with. So hand in hand with chillers, you also end up with needing to heat as well. And heat waters, and we talked about gas furnaces, but right here, this is gas furnace on steroids. These are what we call boilers and boiler heat systems. And here you have it right here where students can see all the components. There is a massive amount of information and technology. These power burners right here are definitely going to the boiler systems and the boiler class. The gas furnaces are definitely the step stone to get to these pieces of equipment in our curriculum. The boiler systems to be able to understand the electrical, understand the gas components, understand, okay, what is a power burner? What does that mean? Well, we're able to show them. And it seems like very few schools across the country actually are teaching the commercial side, but right here, this is a top-end lab. There's, there's so much here. We're gonna cover a few more things in this lab, but we could spend all day long just in this lab alone. There is so much stuff over here. Again, I got goosebumps. I'm so excited. I, I would love to do videos just on any one of these particular systems. It is great though. You need to come and check this out. Look how big your career can go. And here you're not just jumping into it and, and hoping you can fare as you go. You can practice in a nice safe environment. This is great. And even behind this, we have a water cooled system right there behind it. All the stuff's on wheels. They can move it out of the way, get to something else and really get that hands on. But not just one type of compressor, multiple branch compressors. Here's the compression you saw me take apart in another video. They have it right here with the unloader already attached to it. They have all these components and tons of different varieties of compressors. And on top of that, they have something else that's really cool. Look, like they got a big steering wheel. Uh, that's the volute for the chiller. That, that's We did take it out of the chiller and we took it out for the students to see. When Willis Carrier designed the pump for HVAC, one of the things he designed was a centrifugal. They were able to move refrigerant with centrifugal. And this is a centrifugal volute. But this is what's inside the chiller. This is what's moving that refrigerant. And this is really cool. They have it out and see it. I mean, it's so much better to be able to touch it and see it in person. These are so hard to get a hold of. These are extremely, extremely expensive, and then they recondition the used ones. So being able to have this, to touch it, I only see it in the chiller, but to have these pieces out, to get to touch it, see it, understand how it works, this really, really benefits the education side. HVAC is so big, and another big aspect that people don't think about is computer rooms. And computer rooms are essential. If you have all this computer, all this technology, and your computers overheat, that's a lot of VTs of energy going into that, you lose a massive amount of data. You lose companies. Imagine Google if they didn't have cooling for their multiple, multiple server rooms. But even smaller buildings have their own server rooms. And these systems here are special server room systems. This is actually a lever system, which it has a great reputation for it. But how these systems work are the same refrigeration cycle, but they do things so much differently. It adds many components to it. You can have a career specializing in data rooms and data systems. Another thing that's really important to understand about those, they don't just simply move air out and flame their air conditioning. You'll also see on the floor that I'm standing on, you have all these pieces. They're actually moving air through panels in the floor. These panels come up, you have wires moving through there, but also this is where we're moving the air. We want to take the air from the back of all those computers and systems, be able to treat that air, but not only temperature-wise, but humidity is important too. If our humidity gets too low, we get static electricity. How do you think static electricity would work? on a billion dollar server room, or even $10,000 server room. That electricity would be an absolute killer. And if your humidity gets too high, then you get corrosion. We talk about humidity all the time for residential systems. But look at these commercial systems. It is even more important for the equipment itself. But right here in your school, you have these, and they're opened up, and it's parked in there, where people get to work on them. They get to play with them. I would have loved to be able to even see an inside of a lever system before the first time I was assigned to work with them. My boss said, hey, Tyler, we got this lever unit down. Go fix it. It's like, I never even worked. I didn't even know what lever it is. He goes, you'll figure it out. You're smart. And I was overwhelmed. And I was just, I was having a hard time breathing because I was scared I was going to mess something up. But here, your students get to see this. And even if it's not something they're going to be working, the fact that you get to see it, understand this, and the technology that's working with this really ties to everything. This is this is great. Yeah, the false floor and the, the installation of these systems, all the students get to do that. And the 
the students plumbed it in, they put, connected the electrical to it, we've got electrical disconnects right within arm's reach, and so we got the hot side and the cold side, and the students are able to work, and they're able to troubleshoot and diagnose these systems. These new systems are so much fun to one paper, long, and then big giant panels to work with. It's amazing how the technology has changed, and now I have these little computer control screens, it's so much better than all the relays I had to work with back in my day. But also, there's so much to learn, but, but piping and systems. And here we have all kinds of hydronic systems, water copy systems, valves. All of this is a career in itself. And I just haven't seen many schools that have this kind of system for training. But even better than that, back in the background, there's a whole variety of boilers with the glass tube, with all the piping and exhaust out of here. This is, a, this is fantastic, fantastic learning situation. As well as the hydronic heating system. And you can go on and on and on. But right here, this is, this is true hands-on learning. This is stuff that you can't see everywhere else. And imagine walking up to all these components, never seen them before, and trying to diagnose them. The students are able to pipe thread, black iron pipe, and then propress fittings for the copper. We are piping in steam systems and, and water system, hydraulic system. The students, they do get to work on it. They do get to install it and get the installation experience for commercial systems. So we talked about the different types of connectors. Everybody has connectors they prefer over the other. What I'm really loving here is they're showing a variety of different styles. So no matter which your boss prefers, you're getting that hands-on experience right here. And this is so cool. Look at all the moving parts. This trainer is geared to show a whole um, air handling system on like where you can see all the different components and how they're all laid out and how they all work together. If you were to turn one thing off, how does it affect the system? If you were to turn all the things on, how would it work? So this system has many, it's a full-on trainer. This one does have the diagnostics and does have the dip switches to be able to use it. We have been using it for the control systems so that we are able to uh, flip, a, flip a switch and be able to find out what is going on with the unit. This is absolutely amazing. I see here we have air controls. We can measure air pressure, automatic damper systems, different types of pumps. We got the coils in here, plus all the electrical, all in one system. And, and this is the deal of wonders. There's multiple ones of these. This is this is incredible. I I would love to come back just to play with this alone. This look at all the switches. Like I want to press buttons. I love this. You know that I love cutting stuff open and showing examples, but this is a whole other level. Here it's all done professionally. All the parts are together. But check this out. They have a handle on the side of it. You can take this handle and you can move it, and you can see all these parts moving. You can see it actually happen. This is way better than anything that I can do. They have it right here, you can touch it. All these components, we talked about the scroll compressor, it's right here, you can see it, you can touch it, you can, you can see it move. We have the rotary compressor, the uh, hermetically sealed reciprocating compressor, and here's all the components there. They're having to pull it apart, and the grease and oil removed from it, so you can see how it works. I love this, this is really exciting. Oh, this is our building automation lab. This is where the students are able to learn about controls and all the digital DDC controls, and so the students are able to get some hands-on trainings and how to set them up. Bench setups and some demos where the students are actually able to work on work on some systems. We saw in the uh, HR Expo, they had tons of different building automation systems and technologies here and it's growing more and more. And they get to learn about how the systems work. But not just these components here. I love psychometric charts. We're gonna do a video segment on psychometric charts. People get freaked out about these charts, but really it's just a map. If you looked at a map of a city, and say, hey, learn this city, then you'd be freaked out too. We're gonna do videos of how this works, but this is how air conditioning works. This is the map. This is being like the matrix. You've seen how everything works. You can manipulate it. Willis Carrier saw how things worked, and then he learned he could manipulate it. So don't be afraid of this, but we're gonna be talking about this. It's so refreshing seeing schools teach the psychometric chart. Don't be afraid of this. We're gonna teach you this too. But imagine going to a program, they're actually able to answer questions and do this as you go with time. But this is a big part of building automation systems as well as residential stuff. Tons of components, different types of training systems. Over here, we talked about the wiring before, but now the wiring is set up where you get to follow wiring schematics and you have the components. So once you understand how electricity works, you understand how to read wiring diagrams, then you just have that next level. You can come up here, you can do all your tests on this board and see how things act and react with each other. And over here, we have a whole selection of them where students can get their hands on. And then if you, don't, if you notice in front of you, there's computer labs. Well, they also go through new technology, also go with building automation systems, also go into so much more stuff that you can cover just here the hands-on. So as things change, as things learn, as new technology comes out, they have the resources here to really teach you. 
uh, behind us, there's tons of other types of automation controls and dampers all in this room. There's just a mass of information all around us. And I love these trainers where it's not just theory thinking about something's gonna happen. You can see how it's gonna happen. Here they have all their different trainers. You can see move air move through here and see how and, and take the measurements. This is so important. And if you wanna grow that career, we all think about residential. We all need people all to the trade, but it's not just residential. Understanding the commercial side. The commercial side has multiple careers and it alone. So this right here is great to see a school teaching this, to see them have the facility, have the technology, and not just somebody talking. This is, this is it. This is your commercial playground. So this is amazing. So many schools I worked at, we didn't have the supplies to do what we needed. We actually, instructors many times buy their own supplies just to make sure the, the class gets to learn. And here, that's not a problem. We have tons of tools, equipment, parts, supplies, uh, wire nuts, wiring connection, more tools, uh, sprays, like everything you could need. This is like a su mini supply house right here. And not just these old gauges or just one digital set. There's a full digital set of gauges. So you get to see, hey, how to do things the basic way, as well as the new technology all together. Crystal, I mean, this is, this is awesome. How did you uh, come up with the idea of doing this? Oh, we were blessed. This facility has, has grown into the space requirements that fully supports an academic program like ours that needs all the infrastructure, all the tools, and the support staff to help. We have equipment mechanics that maintain the equipment. We also have the students doing the preventive maintenance on things that are need to be done. For example, changing the vacuum pump oil. For example, changing gaskets and uh, hoses, refrigerant hoses and the students they see the evolution of tools we've got old tools in here we've got new tools in here the students will learn the basics and increase their skill levels as they progress through our programs so we have the students that will go from analog gauges to the digital ones and we don't do we try not to do onesie twosies we try to do for class sets so that no one's being left out and everyone gets a taste and I have to say, the extension cords are in good shape. I mean, that's, that's so important for even things with extension cord. And this is the good thick cord. We talk about your vacuum pump, your recovery equipment, having a good thick extension cord. They're not just talking about it, they actually do it. And speaking of vacuum pumps, we have recovery machines, vacuum pumps, all kinds of a variety of equipment, oils, tools, and all down through here, even more tools. The modern vacuum gauges, the digital gauge, vacuum gauges we talked about, multiple different brands. Uh, these are all things that I can't show you. I don't have access to all these tools, but right here you have it. There's all different types of meters. And I tell you, I've been to so many schools that they only had less than a day to learn about doing vacuum. But here you can see that they don't just have one or two vacuum pumps. They have a whole variety of vacuum pumps, a whole variety of recovery machines. Remember I was talked about wanting to do that field piece vacuum pump? They have the field piece pumps. They have the Appium pumps. They have multiple brands of pumps all right here as much as hand tools and everything else so this isn't just hey you get to look at this equipment this is what you get to work with you see the scale that i use they have that same scale right here but not just one a whole variety of them so where every student can really get their hands on i tell you i've, I've worked at schools all across the country and I've never got to have this kind of support, this kind of equipment, this kind of parts. I've always had to use my own equipment. Actually, at a school, I used all of my own equipment. But this, this is great to where an instructor didn't have to spend money out of their own pocket to teach a class. You guys actually support the students and the instructors. Well, that's the thing. It's, uh, it's got to be a, an ecosystem. We can't just have instructors and students. We have to have a full support on the other end. We have to have help. We have to have support staff to actually check out the equipment, maintain the equipment, and repair them as needed, and inventory to make sure that everyone's got what they need to be successful in their classes. So instructors are the subject matter experts. They put in the request for what equipment they want to be successful in their classes. They're the ones that recommend and and put in for grants that will help the program succeed and flourish so we've been very lucky to have a support system in our in our school and we are trying to have the students learn through exposure we're trying to have the students have their hands on different styles different brands so that whatever they get out in the field different price ranges they're able to know what it is how it works and be able to perform that way they don't have that learning curve that they do out in the field with the tools and the equipment that they have they can simply go and and try to put their skills to use a lot quicker than to have a learning curve of, what's this tool? How does that work? And this is name brand equipment. This isn't hardware freight stuff. No offense to somebody starting out, but this is this is quality trade tools. This is, 
again, I'm, I'm just, I'm speechless. I know so many administrations, they want things done as cheap as possible, as few as possible, but really as a school is about education. And all of this is about education, educating the students. This is without a doubt the best school that I have personally ever witnessed. Now, if you guys have a school that can compete with this, by all means, share it with me because I want to go visit. This is education. This is amazing right here. I'm absolutely, I'm, I'm just blown away. I'm, I'm having trouble finding words and you guys know that's not usual for me. But we also have, we got analog gauges, we've got digital gauges, and we got the probes. We've got different different styles of probes. This happens to be the one right in my arm's, arm's length. And wait, you don't just have one set of probes, you have multiple sets. You and multiple. it took me a while before I was actually able to buy my own set of probes. And you know, personally, I'm a big fan of this probe, even this brand, not promoting any particular brand, but I've been using these in a lot of the videos. But it's not just one way of learning. We have multiple ways in it. Just like I showed my videos, the variety of learning, they have it right here. So you can really make your own decision when you get into the field. But I love the fact that the technology and the tools and the equipment are here. I've, I'm loving this. I just, I just can't say enough about it. Just like I do with gauges, I got all the other stuff too. Like, okay. I got all the different type of leak detectors over here. Yeah, I got the Bacharach H10, I got the Inficon, I've got dyes, I've got halogen. We talk about vacuum hoses and I stress all the time about vacuums. I mean, I had the most, the longest series was all about vacuum. I don't have the chance to use a true blue gauge, the true blue hoses. And here is that style vacuum hose that I haven't even got to show you yet. So this is the first time I've got to have my hands on this. And it's really cool how they seal, how they connect, and how this connects is different from how any other hose connects. You got this large O-ring, they slide together, and then they just simply clamp together. This is a style that commercial industrial vacuum uses, but True Blue has brought this technology into residential, light commercial, and even commercial systems, the Blue Vac vacuum gauge. And this is awesome because here you can actually prove that you got a proper vacuum. You can track the vacuum and you can prove that you did your isolation and decay test. I, I think this is awesome. This is a set I haven't got to play with. So here I am, I'm drooling over this because this is, again, I'm, I'm, I think this is awesome. And also, you know, I love MeasureQuick. I love the MeasureQuick app and this also works with the MeasureQuick app. And I think that's technology. Apps, new equipment, the old ways, the new ways, all right here in one program. Uh, this is what we need more of, people. We need this kind of education all across the country for the trades. We need tradespeople, and people love technology. The technology is here. Uh, this is a school that's actually doing what they say, not just talking about it. This, uh, this is what we need. We need more of this. So you hear me all the time talking about airflow, airflow, airflow. But this is the first school I've met that had a flow hood. And not just one, there are multiple flow hoods. So they're able to actually calculate and check airflow. There's even careers related to just test and balance. And right here, you can get your hands on training. You can see what it is that you like the most, but it's, it's really here. And again, more equipment, more tools, wires, supplies. But this is amazing, you guys actually have flow hoods. Yes, these flow hoods, we've, we've got four of them and we go take them out to the labs because our labs, they have the square registers that go along with these. But also we've got the tripod that goes up to help us out. We've got di uh, the digital um, air velocity tools, the, the anemometers, and we got the incline manometers, we've got pitot tubes, we've got all airflow needs. And you have the true flow and grid. We've got the true flow grid. And the true flow grids, they go over the return air and with the airflow for the system, the advocates of indoor air quality, airflow, and all things that go with our system. Because we know that the system is not just mechanics or electrical, it is also the air. The airflow, control. airflow, airflow. I can't say that enough, but here we're actually, we're actually doing it instead of just talking about it. And not just this one, There's, we could spend hours going through all the tools that's in here. Uh, this is just giving you an example. This is just the one that's like caught my eye first, but like you said, there's tons of varieties for airflow. So they're not just saying it, they're showing it, they're doing it, and like you said, immersive training. Immersive training, I love that. So Crystal, absolutely love your program. I love all the hands-on, I love the <laughs> immersive training that you have going on here. Now this, to me, is the nicest school I've seen in the entire country, and I've traveled a good part of the country, and this is absolutely amazing. I'm scared to ask, what does a program like this cost? This program is a stackable program where we have many levels of education. So you can come in and take courses on a course per course basis and that is approximately $130 per credit. Most of our classes are about five credits so you're talking about five times 130 so about $700. $700. Yeah. Now, I think that's amazing because it works at so many different for-profit trade schools and these schools charge twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. Even the ones that are only like a few months long are still $8,000. And a lot of people are scared though. They're scared of coming into a community college because they're scared of having English classes. You have to take those English classes if you want to get that full associate's degree or move on to the bachelor's degree. 
But with your stackable program, it's not required. No, not required. We can take courses at your schedule. If you work during the day, take them at night. Eventually, they will accumulate to where you can stack the certifications. You don't necessarily need to take all of the general education to the certification levels. I love how you can build this program on your own. You can take and stack just a little bit if you need. You can stack it through a long period of time if you need. Or you can just do a whole bunch of them all at once. I think that is absolutely amazing. And I was misinformed about the community colleges and about these schools because I was told you have to go through the entire two-year program. And now I get to realize that I was wrong and what I was told was wrong because now we get to see that you don't have to do that. You can take just HVAC courses or just what you need and you can be working while you're going to school. Absolutely. It's absolutely encouraged to take courses while you're working. That way you can integrate what you're learning in school and in the field so that you can ask more questions and reinforce what you're learning and it helps your memory. If you are taking classes and entry-level job in the HVAC industry, it's gonna be a win-win situation. I love this trade, I love this field, I love everything about this, and I'm just so excited here to see how affordable this program is. The fact that you can have a, a diploma, if you do the whole diploma, you can have an actual associate that means something. Because I've been to schools, and they provide you with a piece of paper, and it, you can't transfer, but here, you can transfer these credits into other programs and also other, other schools. Yes, our AAS degree uh, can transfer over. It can transfer into a four-year bachelor's program of project management, or you can transfer our AAS degree into Ferris State University or other, other type of HVAC universities like that that have a four-year degree. So our credits that you take, um, they're, they're not one-time use. You're able to tack onto it and, and learn more and get more education involved with it. So And that is absolutely great. So. I'm hoping that people see this and realize, and, and don't make the mistake I did, thinking you have to go to that whole two-year site. And if you do, that's great. You can build on it. Or even if you want to take just the HVAC classes first, and then you decide you want more of the other, the whole rounded technician, you can take those other classes later. But really, those classes aren't so scary like people think. Understanding more about math and science and all these other stuff really help everybody out. It's not saying you have to go in and you're going to be a professional English teacher. You're taking some of those basic courses, and this is real something that I wish I could go back in time and make that change because I struggle with a lot of those other concepts, and that's something that I see here. I've seen the classes where people are helping out with that. I, yep. Awesome. We love the integrated model with going to school and working, and the general education, those are needed for um, to get a degree. There is general education requirements uh, for, for example, the AAS degree, Associates in Applied Science. Uh, but those uh, general education requirements, they're there for the wholesome look. Are you going to be an English major? No, but it is reinforcement, supplementals, they give you a more well-rounded, better technician. And we know that things change, but right now, if somebody wanted to go through the whole two-year associate's degree program to have that well-rounded technician, what would that look like? Just approximately, I know I can't hold you down on a price, just to give somebody a full idea, what would, what would you look at? Uh, approximate cost for our program, that's 60 credits at $130 a credit is approximately about $8,000. That is absolutely amazing. So I worked for schools before, there were only three months, we rushed it by three, one day only, like four hours of gas heating. Where you say you have a full gas heating lab, you can get all of this well-rounded and associates is transferable for less money than the absolute cheapest, cheapest school I've ever worked for. That wasn't even accredited. These are things that I wish I would have known a whole lot sooner. And I'm telling you this so that you can make the best choice. Now in your area, you may not have an amazing school like this, but go and check out all of your options. Before you sign those papers, look at all of your options. And I tell you, if you have the chance, man, if you're, if you're in Nevada, come check out CSN, because I'm absolutely amazed at this. Now, there is no paid connection here. I've known Crystal for a long time. We've met, what, it was It was back in Maryland at the first educators conference, what, six, seven years ago? It's been a while. It's been a while. And we've yeah. stayed in touch. We've always talked and stuff, but uh, I just never realized everything's good. She doesn't have to brag about stuff. She no. knows she's got the best program. She doesn't have to brag or push. And I think it's interesting that there's, uh, I just can't believe there's any other school in town after seeing how impressive this lab is. And not just Chris, I mean, she's awesome on her own, but I've talked to all the instructors here and they're absolutely caring, amazing. I see them at all the different educators conferences. They're still learning. They're still in the field wanting to grow and wanting to learn, and I absolutely love that. So if somebody wanted to get started, what would the first steps be? The first steps is to go to our uh, college website, that's uh, www.csn.edu, and they would go and hit apply. And if you hit apply, you'll be able to apply as a student and be able to go down that path of 
choosing your major, and we'll, we'll get to sign up for courses. Awesome. So, you yeah. know, one thing I have to ask you is I've worked for a lot of, a lot of for profit schools, and the admissions process is brutal. I mean, they push and push and push to make people sign up. Mm -hmm. Are they going to be having to see that kind of stuff? Is that something that to really worry about? We are not that aggressive. Um, basically, we understand that we have what you need, and you it's kind of like if you build it, we will come. So we understand that if you need it, you will find us, and um, if you apply, we will keep email contact, but it's not an aggressive model where we're going to be calling and everything on top of that. And what's also cool about this, if you already have the experience in the field and you want to learn more about boilers, you can start adding on to those programs and start getting that gap that you're, you're needing. Is that correct? Yes. Our programs fall, spring, summer. So we have courses all the time where uh, you're able to join and pick up a fundamental course and then go into the specialty course. This is a big thing. Like I, I'm just so impressed with the school. I'm so impressed with the flexibility, the affordability, uh, the instructors. I mean, this is the best school that I've seen in the country. And, uh, and what I want you to understand is that even if you're not looking for a school, if you're an instructor, if you're an administrator, this is what you need to be looking at. This is education right here. We're helping students get better without saddling up with debt and offering flexible plans to help them succeed. And I think that's really what education is about. That's what trade is about. And uh, I, I think this should be applied to more and more schools across the country. So that's amazing. I couldn't agree more, Ty and I am happy to help. We are always doing what we can to help our students, help our community, and help our industry. You know, if we're not doing that, it's, we're, we're not doing anyone a service. So we are always trying to help everyone out. That is awesome. Yep. So what advice would you have for somebody getting new into the trade? Get involved, get in, come see a school, ask some questions, come see me, email Ty, find us on social media, we, whatever you gotta do to find us and then we will help you out to find out what your next steps are. Let's go learn something, let's go, let's get started. Uh, this, this is absolutely amazing, there's some stuff here that I would, I, I just, I hope they get to come back and visit more often and see more stuff. Uh, I'd love to be able to do some classes here with you sometime but I'm telling you guys, I am so excited, I get goosebumps about this school every time I'm here. We actually have some, some people from the conference. We've come back with some uh, educators from all across the country. They're doing a tour of the school right now. And mm -hmm. the smile on their faces is absolutely incredible. It's just, it's, it's just a tear goes by and they're out here. They're <laughs> loving this stuff because this school is impressive. And it's this hidden little jewel right here, in Nevada, right here in Las Vegas. This is the, the biggest secret in America right here. And I uh, absolutely love it. And if you want to learn more, reach out to this, reach out to me, reach out to the school. And uh, let's get started in your career. Let's get started learning. If you're an instructor, reach out. Let's look at making this a program so we're actually teaching people. This was always a pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting us in and sharing this information. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ty. So go to CSN, go check out their website. They have a fantastic website set up, a massive amount of information on other programs too, not just HVAC that they have, a ton of information, ton of programs they offer. They're here for your success, for your career, for your personal growth, and they're very flexible to work with what you need. So go check out their website, see all the information they have. They also have a lot of information about the trades itself. If you want to do some research about HVAC, the kind of job opportunities, all that information is listed on there as well. You can explore different careers. I mean, there's just a massive amount of information that's there. So take your time, go through it, explore, write down some good questions. So even if you're not going to this school, the information here is really, really valuable and it's something to compare to. And it's going to be your education. This is your career. This is your future. Don't just jump into making a quick decision. Make sure you take some time to research things, look at things, and have the most information available to you so that you can make the best decision possible. And again, this is just one of the many resources out there. But if you do live in Southern Nevada, I highly recommend checking us out. Make sure it's going to be the right program for you. Uh, this is a school that I was really, really impressed with, and uh, I think you will be too.